This is a demonstration of a prefabricated open book type Elizarov frame construct for closed fracture of tibia using an all wire frame and the Russian method of wire tensioning. A middle aged patient with a fracture lower shaft of his femur due to a road traffic accident along with a degloving injury to the foot which was sutured at the government hospital was operated under spinal anesthesia. The limb is prepared, cleaned and draped in the standard manner. The limb is prepared as for any tibial surgery and cleaned and draped until a little below the knee or tibial tuberosity. A standard set of knee drapes is used. These are disposable drapes that are routinely used. The foot including interdigital area is prepared. The construct is opened like a book and slid over the leg. A C arm image confirms that the distal ring is about 3 centimeters, 3 millimeters proximal to the ankle joint. The fracture lies in the middle of the frame and the proximal rings lie at a biomechanically acceptable point. This is going to be a non expansile non contractile stable assembly which shall not be disturbed during surgery. The first reference wire is the distal wire that passes parallel to the ankle joint about 3 mm above the ankle joint. The second wire is the most proximal wire again from medial lateral direction parallel to the knee joint. These two reference wires define the frame. They are not yet anchored to the rings because while we anchor them we will ensure that the posterior gap is significantly larger than the anterior gap to allow for soft tissue selling and that the frame is balanced properly in the medial lateral direction. One end of the wire is tightened, cut, trimmed and twisted. The opposite end is now tensioned by the Russian method which involves twisting of the nut by about 90 degrees. The resonation difference between untensioned and tensioned wires tell us that the distal wire has been tensioned. The next step is tensioning of the proximal wire in which the bolt is tightened on the nut. Now as we twist the nut we can find that the wire gets tensioned and once again resonates as the distal wire. The next two reference wires are parallel to the previous wires but to ensure that we are able to move the frame in the medial lateral direction should the need arise. The steps are the same, we pass the wire in the appropriate safe corridor, in this case in the medial lateral axis and tighten one end of the wire to the ring while we twist the nut 
on the opposite side to tension the wire to about 100 or 120 kilograms and at this stage if we tap the wire we shall get a resonating noise. The Russian method of tensioning involves center slot bolts which are twisted by 90 degrees or more in an attempt to wind the K wire around the net resulting in a stretching of the K wire and the tapping noise on it changing from tinny to highly resonant. Once the wires are tensioned, we begin passing the perpendicular wires. These range from 50 to 90 degrees away from the previous wire depending on the anatomical corridors all the time ensuring that we stay away from the vessels and the nerves about which the surgeon should have a precise idea along with the three-dimensional geometry of the limb to ensure that the wires pass through the safe corridors and do not damage vital structures on their way. After each nut is tensioned, we have to tap the wire to ensure that it has achieved maximum tension and subsequent to it we cut the wire and twist it so that the protruding end does not damage the patient's clothes. <coughs> A sea arm image is now taken and it is seen that there is a lateral shift of the distal fragment and this is corrected with an olive wire. An olive wire is now passed from the side of the shift lateral to medial and using a manual tensioner anchoring the wire the olive is pulled towards the medial side ensuring that the fragment falls into place and reduction is hairline. It is checked under C arm once again and once we are satisfied with the reduction, the remaining wires are passed, the wire is tightened, tensioner is removed and at the opposite end of the olive wire is also tensioned. We see that we are now left with an elegant lightweight frame with less than 8 wires through various corridors of tibia. These are 1.8 millimeters wires and their subsequent removal will leave the patient with absolutely no scar. The key to success of this surgery is knowing the anatomical corridors that are safe to pass Krishna wires. Tibia is an excellent beginner's bone and has got plenty of safe corridors to pass wires 
at a good spread giving a stable frame which will not only allow immediate mobilization but the intrinsic dynamicity of the Elizra frame will also stimulate bone healing as per the Wolf's law. In this video, we have seen that every single wire is tensioned by the Russian method. Thereby, we ensure that valuable operating time is saved and we get the precise results that we desire. The manual tensioner is only used when we tighten the olive wire to correct the side to side shifts of the frame. Another inspection under C arm tells us that the fracture is not only correctly reduced in both anterior posterior and sagittal directions, but also there is an element of compression. Subsequently, betadine soaked gauze pieces are wrapped around all the pin tracks and the frame limb junction is left free without bandages. The frame is inspected inferiorly, superiorly, medially and naturally to see that the gap on all sides is uniform. The post-operative radiograph shows an excellent reduction and the patient is discharged on the second day of surgery and this is the video he has sent to me on reaching home and this is four days after surgery because of the foot injury he has still not got confidence for full weight bearing however his function is rather normal he's extremely happy able to bend his knee and is back to his work as a shopkeeper thank you very much